Welcome to Keep It at 100, Oklahoma High School Sports. Another episode, another week. Playoffs has started. It's in, it's in full gear. The chase of the gold ball has begun. Teams are starting to get out there. Uh, it counts. Everything counts now. Everything counts. Welcome to Monday Night oh, High yeah. School. What we call it? High School Sports with my man Big E. What's up, E? Nothing much, Tony. How about yourself? I can't complain. Hey, we're doing another show. You know, we dropped one a little bit earlier with Chad. He kind of talked about the AC pre- ACT prep and, you know, recruiting. Uh, guys, get a chance yeah. to check that episode out. He, you know, he, he gives a lot of information about ACT and how, how to get recruited. So, great show. Uh, like I said, it's just me and him. Big E's going to join me with this show. We're going to have a special guest tonight, Mike Lester, after we come back after these commercials. But before we jump into these commercials, you know, we're going to recap, you know, Week, I guess it's called week 11 now. You know, yep. some teams got in, some teams didn't go, some opt out. But, you know, one of the biggest thing is, though, is getting hotter and hotter as the week goes. You know, high school sports, high school football, is it's, it's at its full flush right now, baby. It, yep. Hey, you know, this is kind of like week one, week two. Everybody's playing this week. There ain't no bye weeks, baby. It's either win or go what? Go home. Either win or go go home. That's what we do. We yeah. keep it 100, though. But before we get into that, though, we're going to – Check into one of our spouts, one of our sponsors. I'm all kind of <laughs> tongue twisted tonight, baby. But I, like I said, before we get going, we're gonna check in with one of our sponsors, then we'll come back with Mike Lester, one of the you know high school reps, uh, you know that does high school games all over the state. So yep. we'll be bringing him on and let him talk about what's it like to be a high school ref. But we'll be right back after these sponsors. Thank you. Yeah. Trying to go out to your trash can, having to smell so bad? Well, no further. Call Spiffy Cans. He cleans, disinfects, sanitizes. 405-423-8824 or go to SpiffyCansOK.com. Spiffy Cans, he's your man. Spiffy Can, he's your man. Welcome back to Keeping It at 100 Oklahoma High School Sports. We are joined by Mr. Mike. He's a high school ref, Oklahoma High School football ref. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Doing great, man. So, uh, as a ref, uh, a lot of people don't like you. (laughs) 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 And, uh, you know, so, um, how do, how, so how do you kind of, I don't know, how do you deal with that? You got parents yelling at you. You probably got kids yelling at you. You got coaches yelling at you. So what's, uh, how's dealing with that? You know, the, you know, really the funny thing is once you step on the field, you know, all the all of it really kind of kind of goes by the wayside. You know, you you hear the coaches some, but with the parents and the, you know, some of the stuff outside the lines, you don't really pay much attention to that. You just try to stay focused on the game. Now, you get out in the community, it might get a little rough. You know, especially if you're doing games where you where you know some people. But yeah. but for the most part, you know, during the game, you know, you you, know, you kind of keep focused on the game. You know, obviously you're listening to coaches and players trying to trying to hear what they're saying. But out, outside of that, you really listen to them a whole lot. So, Mike, I'm glad you joined the show tonight. I got a chance to know you not just for being a rep, but being, you know, one of the top dogs in the market of uh, Fire Lake Groceries. But, uh, you know, before we get to talk about a little bit about that, but, you know, Mike, how did you get involved to become a ref? You know, uh, I was – I've always been pretty involved with just, you know, local little league sports, different things. And my boys, you know, played growing, you know, as they grew up and, uh, you know, I started noticing I was going to have some time on my hands. You know, I wanted to stay close to the game and, and that's kind of how I got into it. I had a good friend, uh, Steve Martin, who, who was also in the grocery business. Uh, uh, he, he was a high school football official and he, he had been recruiting me for several years to, to come out. And, and I'm, I met another guy, uh, Timmy Young, which I don't know, if you guys know Timmy at all, but he's a he's a character around town. He's a he's a uh, teacher by trade and, uh, or by profession, and and he he's been a high school football official for years. Worked up in the college ranks as well. Did some uh, semi pro and arena league different things. But you know, I met him. I met him probably 16, 17 years ago, and he you know he just had the right impression on me. Talked me into it, and I credit those two guys for kind of getting me into it. Well, that's cool, Mike, because I know you, you know, you do a lot of games. So, you know, as you get into being a ref, do you, you know, do they kind of sign you, you know, your, your jobs or your games or your playoff games and all that? Are you kind of qualified as just a certain class or you can do any class of uh, high school football? 
Yeah, so a lot of that kind of depends on, you know, you typically when you sign up, you're going to sign up through the Oklahoma Secondary Schools Association. Uh, a lot of, you know, they're about as popular as officials, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but, uh, you sign up through the uh, OSSAA, and typically from there you join a local association. Uh, you know, there's many associations across the state. I'm, I'm a member of the Shawnee Football Officials Association, and, and typically the, the association you sign up with is – um, each one of them has an assigner and they kind of they assign the games by what schools are contracted with that association so you know you're not you're not restricted to doing just a certain class you know you, you kind of work your way up the ranks and as you become you know more experienced and and uh, you know have a desire you know to call bigger you know class games then then that opportunity is out there for you it's a, really a matter of being in an association that is contracted with those um, you know 6a schools or what have you but but for the most part, if you're a registered official with the state, you know, you, you're going to take a test, you're going to go to local meetings, you're going to go to a state meeting, mm -hmm. and then you're going to get on the field and you're going to prove your worth. And, and, you know, usually that's how you get assigned by, you know, kind of how you perform. That's cool. So are you doing mostly high school games? Are you doing some middle school games? Or is it strictly high school? Or are you trying to get in the ranks and doing college too? So, I mean, what is your cl clarifications, you know? what you want to do because i know right now you are doing high schools i've seen you do yeah. some of the boys scrimmage when my boys were playing so um what is i mean what are you sitting at right now just mostly high school yeah for the most part i do do high school we you know we all kind of pull together to make sure you know midweek games get done because as you know having having boys grow up i mean those seven you know even all the way down to little league all the way to high school those games are the most important games that day yes. for that that <laughs> yes sir that, that family you know so we all try to do our part and and, and call some of those either junior high or little league games. But me, for the most part of my schedule, I'm, I'm working mostly high school games, uh, do some do some JV and, and some middle school games uh, occasionally. But for the most part, it's high school. That's cool, Mike. So, like, you know, being a ref, like, you know, you kind of pointed out when we first came on board, you know, you're not the guy that's like. But, I mean, I, I think it's tough at the job that you guys have because, you know, at the end of the day, you guys are still human beings. You guys are running up and down the field, you know, trying to make every call. You can probably call holding. You can probably call, you know, uh, you know, roughing passer or, you know, any foul. Each, any, 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 any time you're on the field, you can call something. So, I mean, what is it like, you know, when you're in the game, you're kind of tuned in and you're, you're watching the game. So, when you do call a holding call or a clip or something that a coach, you know, don't, don't like, you know, what are you seeing for you to make that call, though? Just sometimes you let it go, or you like, oh, man, I could have I called it, but I let it go this time. So, I mean, what's what's it kind of like? Yeah, for the most part, you know, you're, you're going to call what you see. You're not really thinking about what the what the coaches are, are seeing or, or, or what have you. I'll, I'll tell you, there's, you know, you, you always hear you can call a hold on every play. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the coach will tell you the same thing. The coach will tell you he was holding. You know, and really, what we're looking for on holding in particular is, did it impact the play? Uh, was it at the point of attack? You know, and then and then what action happened? You know, did he grab him? Did he turn him? Did you know, kind of, you know, what was the action that happened? Because when you go to, you know, most of the time, if you can tell a coach, this is the action. He 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 grabbed him on the shoulder and he turned him. You know, the coach is going to be. You know he's going to accept that if you give him a number and you tell him the action that happened and and it was at the point of attack most of the time you don't hear a whole lot you know where you get a lot of where you get a lot of feedback from especially the crowd or from assistant coaches is you know they're watching a particular a lot of times a parent if you will you know they're watching a particular kid and if if the the play is going to the left side and their kids the right tackle or, or right defensive end and and he got held you know, he's completely out of the play. Well, that parent's usually one yelling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they <laughs> some could have got clear from one sideline to the other, and and he very well could have. But a lot of times, you know, for officials, we have keys as well. So as we're watching, you know, as we're watching the point of attack or what's going on, you know, that hold that didn't affect the play, it, it might have very well got missed. Um, but for the most part, we're looking at the point of attack to make sure that there was action there that we that we make sure we we get that. So what does it take to get a personal foul though? Because I mean, I've been watching some of the games in high school, and I see some of these kids get two, you know, personal fouls and they're kicked out. So if they get kicked out of a game, are they kicked out for one game? Or are they kicked out for two games? So how does that come of uh, impact of the, you know, who determines if they're if they're kicked out if they're not? Because I know I want to say, you know, a few years back, uh, I think my son Deshaun is a PC West game, the last game of the season. We wasn't going to playoffs. He got into a little altercation on the sidelines. He got kicked out. 
uh, for his next two varsity games. So he would have to sit out his junior year. So he ended up going to wrestling and missing two wrestling matches. So how does how does that impact? Yeah. So you know when we're when we're calling the games, we're really looking at the you know kind of what happened and for a personal foul. You know, personal foul is kind of a uh, it's a classification of a foul. You know, there's so many so many different personal fouls. You know, whether you have targeting, whether you have roughing, whether you have um, different things. But when it comes to ejections, you know, you, you're looking for if there was a if there particularly in a fighting or altercation type scenario, you're looking for a punch or a kick or, you know, if one of those two things happen, you're going to eject the kid. Yes, sir. In, in today's day and age, there's always videos. So, so, you know, on the field, we're going to eject the kid. If we see a, a, a punch or a kick, there's, you know, it's pretty black and white at that mm -hmm. point. He's in the game. That, uh, at the end of each game, whether there's an ejection or not, we're, the referee always fills out what's called a game report, and they send that into the state. And, you know, there's lots of things in that report, you know, whether it be unsportsmanlike fouls or if there's an ejection, that's going to get reported. Facilities, you know, if there's a, you know, gophers got in the field and tore up the field, you know, where you, we're going to report things like that. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. but uh, <laughs> No, 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 I like it. I like it. Hey, you're keeping it 100, Mike's what we do. We yeah. keep it 100 here on Oklahoma High School Sports. I mean, this was it's pretty cool to have a ref on because, you know, like I talked to you earlier, you know, you don't get a chance to hit, you know, no one ever get to hear the ref side. Everybody, like you say, everybody's mad at you, want to throw popcorn at you when you're walking out. They love you when you walk in the game because, especially, you know, I know last year, kind of get off the subject a little bit, but I know last year, Carl Albert got beat by Piedmont at Piedmont where everybody wanted to blame the refs. I'm watching Facebook, listening to Twitter. <laughs> <coughs> Everybody's, it's the refs, it's the refs. Well, at the end of the day, the refs do call the game, but you got to go play the game as a player, as a coach. You got to call the right place. So it ain't right. the ref that calls you guys the game is what you do. Yeah, granted, like I said earlier, you're gonna miss a call, but you know, I mean, like I said, I've seen some kids this year get on personal fouls. You know, say something to the refs, and I think a lot of times the refs are pretty cool and they're gonna kind of let you stay in the game. But you had to say something that kind of triggered that ref for him to throw that flag. So, so like I said, when they do get a personal foul and they get kicked out. Is it does it come down to the you know the OSA say to say hey how long they're gone does it come down to refs or how how does that work? Yeah, no, that's completely up to the OSSA and the and the coaching staff to some degree, but the OSSA has has really the 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 final say in that matter. You know, if if a kid gets, you know, there's really only certain ways that we're going to remove a player from the game. You know, you're going to you might have a situation where they get too unsportsmanlike. You know, that could be mm -hmm. that, could, you know, maybe they. You know, unsportsmanlike in, in, in by definition are non-contact. So they said something, they taunted somebody, they, you know, they did something that was unsportsmanlike. <laughs> but, you, you know, you get two of those, and you see that sometimes. You know, kids get excited. They watch Sunday games, and, you know, they go high-stepping into the end zone, look back <laughs> to high school. That's a, that's a foul. You know, you can't, you can't do anything to bring attention to yourself. In a sportsmanlike manner. Oh, okay, okay. See, that's something you, know, you taught me something right there. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's good yeah. stuff, yeah. A lot of times, you know, and that's what happens. A lot of times, the biggest confusion with high school officiating is, you know, when you're watching Saturdays and Sunday football games, you know, the rules are, you know, there's over 200 rule difference between Friday and Sunday. Wow. You know, they're just, you know, and there are a lot of, you know, a lot of them are small, but a lot of them are big. Uh, you know, noticeable differences from from an official standpoint, but. You know those that number of rule differences will cause a lot of upset fans or coaches. You know because even coaches you know, a lot of times don't dig into the rule book. They're watching Saturday games. You know when they're not, you know when they're not actually on the field coaching. That's when they're watching on TV, and then they come out on Friday night and want those same calls, and it just doesn't work that no, way. No, don't work that way. <laughs> getting no. kicked out of a game. You know you're going to have if you get too unsportsmanlike, you're going to you know that it's going to be an ejection. If you if you kick or punch somebody is going to be an ejection and then and then the only other one is if there's a flagrant foul and that that flagrant foul may be you know maybe targeting is probably the one that's most talked about these days but it you know there may also be you know a flagrant foul that could be you know a, a blind side block where somebody led with their head or, yeah. or something that was just uncalled for and, and it 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 was it, they're always going to be safety related you know it, there was a safety issue that, that caused it but those are really the causes of kids being the removed from the game and then that's up to the ossa from that point to determine how long they're out and like you said it's it's typically two games especially for fighting you know and that can be administered either you know if it's at the end of the football season it's going to roll over to their next 
varsity sport, um, or if they don't play another varsity sport, it'll roll over to that next year. Well, Mike, I got to ask you this tough question right here. Okay. Have you ever blown a call? Man, you know, I'll tell you, you know, to be honest with you, we all have. (laughs) We we all, and, and, you know, some of them are, we always, you know, a lot of times you see, you know, officials out on the field, you see them, you know, in a conference or whatever, you know, they're working to make sure they don't blow a call, you know, but there's, uh, I'll tell you this past Friday night, we were doing a, a varsity playoff game and there was a, a rule interpretation that we, we didn't administer correctly, you know, and, um, you know, we go in at halftime and, you know, we're talking about it because, you know, just like, just like teams make halftime adjustment officials are doing the same thing. They're talking about what went right, what didn't go right. And, you know, in this day of an age we're in right now with COVID, you know, there's a lot of crews and, and mine in particular who, who missed several weeks in a row. We missed three weeks in a row just due to bad circumstances with COVID. And, you know, so we get out there Friday night for a playoff game and, you know, you got to knock the rust off. I mean, it, it, you know, you know the rules and you know where you need to be, but sometimes it just doesn't come back to you as quickly. But, you know, we, we got in there and we talked about it. And, you know, we went back out and, you know, we found – and, and I'm proud of the, the guys that I call with the, the hardest thing for a lot of people to do is go say, Hey coach, you were right. You know, but we, we take a lot of pride in making sure that we do get it right. Or, and, and make sure that we go back. We went to that group the second half. We say, hey, coach, we looked it up and you were right. That should have been a five yard penalty. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah, I mean, what, what is a blown call from, from the stands and what's a blown call from the field are a lot of times two different things, but, but yeah, officials get it wrong you know, a lot, you know, I mean, uh, that has been kind of tough. Uh, yeah. 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 That's not a, you know, and it's, you know, officials are, are, you know, prone to human error, just like, like coach players, and, you know, and, you know, all the rest of us, but, you know, for the most part, we, we feel like we, we get it right. There's the reason there's five of us out there is because, you know, we, and you want to be with a group of, you know, in high school, it's five guys. You know, you want to be with a group of five guys who aren't afraid to call each other out. No, I mean, that's, that's, not, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, correct me right on that, you know, because like I said, you're human beings, you're going to make mistakes. So, like, uh, what's been like one of the best games you kind of called and you've seen has been kind of come down to the wire and something like that, you know, because like I said, I know you've done over, you know, probably over hundreds of games of high school football. And I know you've done some, you know, the, you know, eight man football to, 6 a to, you know, 5 a 4 a was like, yeah. is there a game that you remember you're like, man, that was one of my best games I've called. I got a chance to call and be part of. You know, from from a from a what it mattered standpoint, I would say probably uh, 2018 uh, playoffs. We, we, you know, you just brought up eight-man football. That, you know, those guys don't always get the shout-out that, uh, that they, I don't want to say deserve, but, you know, they don't always get recognized for, for playing good football, but we went to a, uh, the late man school that's uh, Seminole with Tumka, and they played they played Depew, and, and that game was it was kind of back and forth the the entire game. You know that that came down to a walk off two point conversion. Man, so, wow! You know Tumka was down uh, fourteen to eight. You know they went down and scored with with time running off the clock. It it hit zero when they scored, made it fourteen to fourteen. Conditions weren't uh, favorable to them kicking. I don't know if they didn't have a kid that could kick or if they, you know, just weren't comfortable with with the field conditions or what. But they went for two, scored the two-point conversion, walked off the field. So so that's always cool. And then, you know, earlier, you know, this season, we we had a game at Newcastle where they played uh, cash, I believe. And, you know, Newcastle was down significantly i think 20 something points with less than four minutes to go you know they go down and score recover two onside kicks and go down and win the game wow (laughs) those you know those are things where you know you see something like that or you're a part of it and and you're just you know you 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 just remember this is why i'm doing it you know this is you know be out here for this kind of excitement you know a lot of times they say the best part of officiating is getting to the field and leaving the field you know but you know you have moments like that and and you realize that you know, that, that's what it's all about. So, you know, you get to go to different high schools. Uh, is there a lot of schools that kind of take care of you guys as far as, like, feeding you and, 
you know, making sure you guys are well taken care of. Because I know when I was part of the Chata Touchdown Club, you know, we did a real good job of, you know, feeding the officials before the game and making sure they had water and, you know, drinks, whatever they needed at halftime. Is, is a lot of, do a lot of other schools kind of do the same thing? Or do they like, man, you know, hell with these guys, excuse my French, keeping it 100. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, hey, do, I mean, do they kind of – You, you know, know what I figured is you need more guys like Tony that like to eat in charge of the, uh, the football club. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> baby. You can see me, man. I got to go on a diet, Mike. Mm-hmm. I keep looking at myself on these, you know, on these shows on YouTube. I always tell people to come look at our good-looking face, but I'm like, man, T, they don't lie about the camera. It does put 10 to 15 more pounds on you. So, but no, uh, I mean, like I said, dude, I mean, does just, just, just people take care of you guys, though? Because, like, the end of yeah. the day, it's still a job that you're doing. You know, the you know a lot of times it does come down to the to the booster clubs and the quarterback clubs. And, you know, a lot of schools do, do a, you know, a good job of doing that because, you know, as it's no secret, the schools in general are, are short of funds. But, man, I'll tell you, we, you know, you, you brought up Choctaw. You know, you go there and you, you get the barbecue or hot links or <laughs> something, even scrimmage, you know. And, you know, there's schools like Lexington. They bring you, you know, they bring you, uh, oh, it's, I don't even remember what they call it, but it's a, it's a hamburger with a hot dog on it. Uh, you know, it's, a, that sounds you know, good. those kinds of things. <laughs> you know, I was talking about, it's funny, I was talking about Wetumpka in 2018. Probably one of the, I don't know if this would happen in, happen in, in COVID times right now, but, you know, we, uh, the next week after that, after that Wetumpka game, we went to uh, Holbrook. I uh, actually saw saw a young man break the uh, state rushing record. I'm pretty sure he still holds it, a young man by the name of Jacob Bruce. But uh, we we went to Halbert, and they had a, a spread in the – in the it was really the ag room, but they had a spread in there. They had chili. They had beef soup. They had cornbread. They had – I mean, they had a whole <laughs> – Kind of like a buffet, huh? It was the coldest game we've ever called, and that hot food was – we had some at halftime, and we had some after the game. It was It was – it was much needed. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good stuff. But, Mike, man, I really appreciate you coming on here and, you know, keeping it 100 Oklahoma High School Sports. And it's pretty cool to, you know, have, a, like I said, a ref that does high school games, has, you know, done many games, and, you know, and people can see it from both sides. You know, kind of like he said earlier, and I repeat it again, you know, you're the guy that people love, the guy they hate at the same time. Yeah. But I will say this, though. You won't catch Mike Lester throwing a flag if you want to go see this guy at Fire Lake at three different locations. <laughs> You can catch him at, you know, the main grocery store there at Fire Lake. And, you know, then the other two stores is, uh, you know, in McLeod and in Tecumseh. But if you walk in there, you're going to catch some great deals over at Fire Lake. And Mike will not throw a flag on you. Now, he will throw a flag on you if he catch you going in Walmart at one of them other competitors. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Keep it 100. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Like I said, uh, good luck. Who do you got this week before we let you go? Uh, we had uh, Weatherford and Cushing this week. Okay, All okay. Right. Yeah. So who you think well, who, who's the favorite to win that Cushing? Man, I tell you, I never, I never dig into the scores. That's one thing. You know, most of the time, most of the time I couldn't tell. You, you know, I get asked every uh, every Monday. I get asked who won the game this week. <laughs> uh, half the time I can't tell you. You know, because we're not we're not really interested. But I'll tell you, you know, being the playoffs, you know, knowing Weatherford's number two, Cushing being a seven and three team. You know, I think I think it'll be a good game. You know, we 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 roll into the game not looking for a winner or loser, just you know, really looking to to be objective and call a call a good game. But you know, we're looking forward to to going to Weatherford and, and having a good game this week. Well, Mike, have a safe trip, and I'm pretty sure I will catch you sometime next week. All right, I bet. Thanks, sir. <laughs> yes, thanks for having me. Uh, no yeah, problem. no problem. Bye-bye. Bye. Folks, that's Mike Lester. As you can see, man, he got a chance to talk to us a little bit. You know, what's it like to be a high school ref? And I'm telling you, it's a tough job. He kind of hit him right from the get-go. He didn't didn't waste waste (laughs) no punches. He just said, hey, you're the guy that people don't like. Oh, poor guy. We do like you. I mean, he's done some of the top top scrimmages. So, good guy. I got a chance to know him because he's in the grocery business. Not just He's just a ref, you know, on Friday nights. But he does run a great business over at Fire Lake Grocery. So, I've got a pleasure to kind of work with the guys side by side. You know, got a chance to win some awards, be in a golf tournament with them. So, great guy like Mike Lester. But it's pretty cool, like to say, to have a ref on. So, you know, like I said, people don't know about refs. Yeah, people, yeah, nobody knows about them. You know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody out there, but I'm sure we are the first sports podcast to ever have a ref. The first. Ever. Keep it 100, <laughs> baby. That's what we do. We keep it 100. I, I, I have never seen a sports podcast where they have a ref on there. Yeah, that's what so, we do. I mean, yeah. we had a guy that talked about the what? The ACT prep, Chad? Yeah. 
Fargo. Yeah, that episode will be dropping later this week. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. That's what yeah, we do. That was, that's what we do. Yeah. But you know, we I know you guys were probably tired of listening to the refs, probably tired of listening to about the ACT prep, but we are going to get into a little bit of high school football, oh, talk yeah. about playoffs. Baby, we got so much to talk about, so you better go get your popcorn and your Pepsi and your Mountain Dew, whatever <laughs> you got, and sit back and listen because we're going to bring a great show. We're going to bring it live. We got, hey, we're here. We got the fireplace going, baby. It's cold, oh, yeah. and we're going to warm you up what we do, baby. We keep it what? We keep it 100. Hey, hey, talk to me, Big E, man. Let's man. get this recap going. I will say one thing before we get going, Big E. I got to give a shout-out to my man, Coach Ginn, with oh, the yeah. Bethel Wildcats, baby. Got them a playoff win. Got them a playoff win. How long has it been? Since man, I don't know. Win. I'm probably sure it's been a long, long, long time. I text him first thing Saturday morning, probably about 6.30 in the morning. I told him <laughs> congratulations. Bethel gets the win over uh, Comanche 27-0. A big wow, win. Shut for the, a shutout, wow. baby. It was 0-0 zero to zero at halftime. So, like Mike said, they made some adjustments. Yep. Some good adjustments. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm keeping 100. They're going to go down and beat Marlowe. Marlowe, yeah. one of the top dogs? in Marlowe's the top dog in, in, in 2A. You know that bracket's big. But oh, yeah. Coach Gig got them boys on fire, baby. They're kind of like Diddy's and hotcakes. Oh, yeah. You know me and my hotcakes. Oh, you love Folks, your Folks, if y'all watch us rock the mic, <laughs> that's what we do. We keep going. The mic fell over, but we ain't going to stop the show. Oh, yeah. We're going to keep going. Had to go over there and fix it. We, we yeah, keep it going. Yeah, that's what we do. Another yeah. big game, big 6A, uh, a rematch of earlier in the season, Mustang versus UConn. Mustang pulls it off again in a landslide. Uh you know, doubling the score on them, 42 to 21. Uh, go down there and beat UConn in their house. Uh, yeah, it's kind of an upset. UConn uh, finishes the season at 6-4, and four, and the Mustang currently sitting at 4-6. Uh, and six, Or uh, now they're at 5-6. and six. But, um, yeah, that was just one of those games. I thought UConn was going to come out with the win, but Mustang goes over there and upsets them, and then they move on. I'll tell you another game, Dell City. Yeah. Four in a row, baby. And, hey, folks – I'm sorry, last week I said, you know, I kind of said something. I had some some wrong terminologies, and, you know, I said some wrong things. Not Nothing bad, but I said the kid broke his leg. He did break his leg. He had twisted his ankle, so he sat out, and Kobe went back to quarterback. Now Kobe's back to running back. Uh, yep. You know, uh, Delcy took care of business against Ponca City, beat him 41-6, to you know. I mean, right now, I mean, yeah, they got a tough game this Friday night. They're going to go up against the Bigs League Spartans. Oh, I mean, yeah. uh, one thing Coach Dunn and Coach Jones can do, they can kind of get those guys. That'll be a big upset if they can get that win mm-hmm. over those guys. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a tough journey. But I tell you, man, Delcy opened the game with an 80-yard 80, 80 bomb oh, to yeah. Sherrod. I mean, I mean it, it, it was great to see that QB throw the ball. You know, I kind of teach Reggie, and I said, hey, Delcy, you got a real quarterback over there now. You know, Quinlan right. ain't there no more. You know, I said, that kid might look better than number 10 that was there last year. Yeah. Just giving you a hard time, Reg. But <laughs> it's good to see Delcy to get some wins, though, man. Right. And I'm telling you right now, once you kind of get on that winning streak, guess what? It can keep going. It yeah, might it not slow going. down. So yeah. good luck to Delcy this week as they, you know, they take on the Bigsby Spartans. They got to make that drive. You know, like I said, I hope they can come home with a victory. Uh, another game I kind of give a shout out to is oh, Coach uh, Coach Zoe got the win over you know Wright Charver uh, sophomore. Oh yeah, uh, beating him what forty one to seventeen. Yep, and you know um, he kind of get to redeem himself. He's gonna go against Santa Fe. They beat him earlier this year sixty nine to fourteen. Only thing about that game, Big E. Zoe's going to have to find 56 points because he got beat last time, 69 to 14. If yeah. he can score 56 points plus the 14 he had last time, they get him 70 to 69. So yeah. hopefully he can get those points and get that win. But good job to him to get those guys going. I know his quarterback looked good. Uh, so hopefully he got things going. He's going to take on the Edmund Santa Fe, <coughs> you know, Timberwolves this week, and it's going to be a tough game. Uh, another game I looked at that, you know, took care of business was the Middle City Bombers. I think oh, they yeah. got beat by – you know, Stillwater a couple weeks ago. You know, we we B and B Big E went over there and kind of watched that their their practice. Yep. You know, thought they had a chance to win conference. You know, and, and guess what? I'm sorry, chance to win district. Yep. And guess what? They came a little bit short. You know, Stillwater yeah. put them on them, put it on them 31 to 10. Right. But they got the win over um, Muskogee. Muskogee. You know, Muskogee, Muskogee which I can understand Muskogee. They took the last four weeks off. Yeah. I guess they thought it was spring break. I guess so. I mean, how you take? I've been four dogging weeks Muskogee off? all year. I mean they. Hopefully right. they can come back and bounce back next season, get back into the playoffs. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm gonna let you dog work. it because I don't know how you take four <laughs> weeks off. You took one, two, three, four weeks off, and then you're gonna try to come back and play Midwest City, drive to Midwest City. I guess they must have free snacks or something. They must have got to stop at <laughs> Golden Corral or some buffet to go to that game because it makes no sense to take four, three to four weeks off, then come back and play Midwest City. Then you go down and you get beat what? 
39 to 0. You yeah. know, but hey, 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 the Bombers got a tough game next. They got they got, they got Booker T. They oh, got yeah. Booker T coming. That'll up, be a good you know? game. I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and call that the game of the week. Game Booker of the week? T versus Midwest City. That'll be a great game to watch. Uh two teams, you know, um I think Booker T got their uh he plays everything. Gentry Williams, he can do it all all over the well, field. Well, he's hurt. That's the one that's hurt, right? I saw him back when I was no, like, oh. no. He tore his ACL. Big E. He, I think he's still out. I mean, unless he got a cousin or somebody moved in oh. another. But I think he's. Still I thought out. I saw him when I, I thought I saw a graphic or something of him when I was watching that ESPN game. No, but. you about to start grabbing him on those on crutches. <laughs> he's still sitting out, baby. He ain't coming back yeah. unless he got a, a clone or something. But he will yeah. not be playing in the game this Friday night. But you know, Booker T got to come up to Midwest City. So, and I'll tell you right now, man. Like That'll I told you before, if Urban is not turning the ball over, Midwest City is going to win. Yeah. You hear me again? If Urban is not turning the ball over, maybe he's going to win. My man Friday got him a touchdown. Mikel Stewart, when he does every week, he had a pick, right. you know, had a touchdown. Every I mean, Middle City, is, they got some great athletes over there. I got to mm-hmm. give a shout-out to the guy over there at uh, Shawnee. Uh, Sexton, yeah, you know the new head coach over there. He got a win over Sean. I mean, over Sapopa. Uh, I oh, think yeah, it came down win. to the last, last you know minute, whatever. But he got he, he pulls out a win, gets his first win as a head coach. Great job, Sexton. You know, used to be Muskogee's old uh, defensive coordinator. Now he, you know, he's a head coach of Shawnee, old Colorado young man. So he's back at home, close to home. But you know, we'll tackle some of these, um, some of these games for you know. Kind of week one, week two, what we're going into because everybody's playing this week. Like you said, right. it's time to get busy because everybody's oh, yeah. going to be playing this Friday night. Everybody's playing. And, hey, it's it's kind of like fireworks. And like I said last week, it's going to be fireworks in November because there's oh, some yeah. tough games. So we'll get into those games right after you hear from one of our sponsors. We'll be right back. Thank you. So we'll All go right. ahead and get a bracket. Yeah, let me pull up. The, uh... All right, what I'll do is I'll pull up uh, – 6A big and you pull up 6A small so then we'll just keep flip flopping okay. alright gotcha I'll let you bring this back Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Yeah, kind of like it still sounds quiet in the mic. I don't know what's going on. It might have messed something up when, when it fell, but I don't know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's just quiet. Like it's kind of muffled or quiet or something. I might be able to fix it in editing, but okay. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, bring it back. You bring it back. All right. Welcome back to Keeping It 100 Oklahoma High School Sports. We got our brackets pulled up. Tony, what are some games that you see in 6A big this week well, that big, stand out to you? You know, the big 6A, like I said, we kind of talked about, you know, Edmund Santa Fe and Westmore. They've hooked up early this year, and it wasn't a game. Like I said, I yelled at Zoe, Zoe, what are you doing? I'm going to ask you again, Zoe. You better be ready this time. <laughs> do not give up 69 points. Hey, I'll tell you right now, I want to see Zoe do good things because he's family to me. The guy's a great coach. The guy played, you know, college ball in Missouri. He's an old bomber. You know, he plays some pro ball. So, I want to see Zoe do good. So, when Zoe do good, the family does good. But I'm going to tell you right now, Zoe, baby, I love you, but you better get ready for next year because I tell you, the Evan Santa Fe got too many weapons for you, too many weapons. And I tell you, folks, it's kind of scary because you don't know what's going to happen because right now you're seeing all these coaches telling everybody, go to the other sport. You know, you only got so many kids because if one of your kids that's a JV player or a ninth grader or, you know, a sophomore player that comes down with the COVID, guess what? Your season is what? It's over. It's over. Yeah. And so right now these coaches are playing everything cautious. You can see these schools are shut down, but they're still letting football go around because oh, I'm yeah. telling you right now, OSSA is making some big money. You see all <laughs> them games they had played, man. Everybody, I'm yeah. telling you, man, I was I was um, looking at one of those Class A, Class B brackets. Man, that's gonna take almost two months just to get done with that bracket. <laughs> right. But I look yeah. at, I, you know, we will keep moving on. I'm gonna look at, you know, I'm gonna put Santa Fe to move on. Uh, you got you got Union and Broken Arrow. Your boys Broken Arrow. I know yeah. they played on ESPN. They ain't been the same. They probably should have nope. played on. They probably should have played on Fox instead of ESPN because <laughs> right now, man, I mean, it's not looking yeah. good. I think Union kind of got things turned around and going. I know they had some yep. some issues at the beginning of the year, but I'm gonna pick Broken Arrow to go. I think it's gonna be Broken really? Arrow, Edmund right. Santa Fe. You know, um, we'll, we'll go game. from there. That'd be a good match. And then you know, you, you go to the other side of the bracket. You know, you're looking at, um, you know, you had Jinx and. Um, 
You're going to have Jinx and Norman North. And I know Norman North kind of played their rival. That was a pretty good game, you know. Yeah, uh, it came North, down the last minute. Came, I mean, it was, it was a good game, yeah. you know. So, North kind of pulled it off. Jinx went down there and beat up on Moore. So, you got Jinx and uh, Norman North. I'm gonna put. I'm probably going to pick Jinx in that game and, yeah. you know, see them move on and, you know, take up the top dog up on top, which is everybody know, man, you got a Owasso. Everybody's picking Owasso to win. And oh, guess yeah. what? If you ain't beat him yet, you ain't gonna beat him. You ain't gonna beat him later on. Let yeah. something very, very bad happen. I tell you right now, Blankenship's a great coach, and he got those guys rocking and rolling. Mustang. Guess what though? It's family versus family because you got Blankenship versus Blankenship, which is family. Their cousins are related somehow, but yep. you got the two Blankenships hooking up. But guess what? The Blankenship has already won a state championship. It's gonna knock off the other Blankenship that ain't won nothing that Mustang. So yep. you'll see, you know, Mustang. You're gonna probably see Mustang and Jinx in the finals. I mean, in the in the in the you know probably the semifinals. Yep. And then you'll probably see Owasso is gonna take on. Edmond Santa Fe, and guess what, baby? You heard it right here. Keeping it 100 Oklahoma high school football. Don't say what I think you're about to say, Tony. Edmond Santa Fe is going to win the state championship. The Big Six say. You heard it here, folks. Edmond Santa Fe is going to win the what? Big Six say. So, let's talk about your Big Six A2. What we got over there? Uh, right now we got Stillwater versus Sand Springs. Woo! Uh, I think that game game got canceled because Sand Springs. Yeah, yeah, because they already. Uh, you might be right. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to yeah, me. I might so be same, jumping the gun. Uh, so Stillwater's coming off the bye this week. Uh, they got got to sit out last week. You're right. You're right. Big get some time to heart. rest and uh, uh, get some time to rest. But practice, you know, like I talked about last week, there's always something to improve on. I Even know. though it's Stillwater, they've been they're undefeated. They still got room to improve. So hopefully they did that. And uh, so they'll take on Sand Springs this week. Um, I, I think it'd be stupid to pick against Stillwater. They're just looking. They're looking really good. They're looking so good. they got good. They got. I mean, they're loaded on both sides. You know, right with the, with the Walker, with the you know the the quarterback. Just you know, he just committed to uh, UCO. Yep. Uh, you know, you got <clears throat> the defense guy that you know the linebacker that's committed to OSU. I mean, yeah. so they I mean, they got some guys that you know play, yeah, they got play the next le- next level. Oh yeah. Uh, and then we got uh, Bixby versus Dell City. You know, Dell City coming off a big win uh, last week, forty-one to seven against Ponca City, but. Bixby's just been showing up every single week, and they're not letting off the gas. I mean, I, Bixby's going to take this game probably in a landslide. I well, you know, that. it's funny because, you know, last week, you know, I kind of talked about, you know, uh, Presley, you know, stay away from Kansas. And my, yeah. buddy, my buddy Andre hit me up, and, you know, he played for Les Miles, and he's like, man, Tony, stay off Les Miles. And I'm not saying nothing bad about Kansas because, hey, D1 school, you heard it earlier when we was talking to Chad, you know, to go to school, the OU OSU is 90000 you know, for four years. That's if you finish in four years. So right. most kids usually don't finish in four years. Let's say just taking, you know, numerous hours of, you know, 15, 16, 17 hours of college. You know, most kids probably finish in five or six years. So you add that 90000 on to a couple more years, and guess what? It, it, it adds up to be more than 90000 Yeah. But, you know, wherever the kid decides to go to the ball, but, you know, him putting himself on ESPN, you know, two Thursdays ago and letting people see what he was really about – uh, it's so funny because you know people sleeping on his size, I guess, because I mean the kid is is, is outstanding. He's kind of reminds right. you of a Reggie Bush a little bit. You know he can play receiver, he can play running back. Uh, kid probably go on the other side of the ball. You know you can use the kids in, in many different positions and get things done. But you know Dell City does have a good defense. You know they got one probably the best defensive yeah. coordinators around, and Coach Jones, the guy could easily be a head coach somewhere. So. Um, but, you know, I think they got the work cut out. I don't know if they have enough offense to keep up with Bigsby. So, right. you know what? I'm going to go with you, Big E. Dell City, hey, guess what? You're probably going to win state in basketball, maybe track again. Yeah. But this year, I don't think you're going to get it in football. Who else you got, baby? Man, uh, Midwest City and Booker T. Uh, talked about them earlier. I'm calling it the game of the week. Uh, that's just going to be a great matchup. Uh, messed up earlier. Thought uh, Gentry Williams was back. He's not. Has a torn ACL. He'll be out for the rest of the season. But, um It'll still be a good matchup, you know. Booker T's not a terrible team. I know y'all saw them get uh, embarrassed on ESPN on national television, but uh, fact of the matter is, is Midwest City is not Bixby, and uh, I think Booker T will be able to bounce back and uh, they'll put up a fight. But Midwest City will still come out with the win. Bombers gonna win the game. I yeah. mean, you know, they just got too much athletes for them. I mean, yeah. think about Midwest City. Like I said, I'm gonna keep saying it and saying it and saying it again because they're easy. To, they're easily a team that can easily go win state this year. But if 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 Urban don't turn the ball over, 
be able to see you got some they can do some things. They got yeah. good receivers, they got a good running back and you know, Friday, so they got a good defense and they're getting some kids back, you know. I mean they got the Seabock kid that's probably about six five that plays tight end defensive end. So they got yeah. some players over there, you know. But I think Middle has got to do it this year because if you know if you look at their starting lineup, man, they got Mostly everybody's a senior, and, you know. Right. I think next year you only got, you know, Irvin's coming back. That's a, you know, sophomore. So they're going to have to reload and rebuild, you know. Good thing about it, they're close to Tinker, so they might get some kids move in. Yeah. But I think this is going to be the year if they're going to do anything. But right. uh, I see Middle City with that game. You know, I'm going to pick 35-21 would be okay. my score in that game. Yeah. What else you got over there? That Man, big? my alumni. uh Woo. My alma mater, Choctaw versus Putnam City North. Uh, first time in a long time, Choctaw will be hosting a playoff game, and I will be there. Uh, well, I'm going to make sure to be there. You know, uh, anytime that, uh, you know, Coach Corbin has completely turned not just a football team, but athletics, Choctaw athletics around. You know, he's uh, the assistant athletic director there, and there's just a new – new buzz in Choctaw, no pun intended. Well, you know, but, and you know, that's just not football. That's, that's basketball. That's track, uh, cross country even made it to state this year. You know, the, the Choctaw used to be kind of on the lower end, a bottom of the totem pole used, when it came to everybody's athletics. homecoming, everybody's yeah. homecoming. But you know, yeah. I know Aaron McConnell's kind of said that him and Ronnie both kind of said that, you know, we're not nobody's homecoming no more, but this is going to be a tough game. And I know you kind of gave, uh, you know, uh, Corbin a shout out, you know, being an athletic director. Him and Hesman both have done a great job, you know, getting that stuff turned around there. And, uh, you know, one thing is you can do when you're on the bottom, one thing you can do is what? Go up. And, Go up, and that's yeah. what, you know, Corbin's done. He's in his fourth year, you know, and that's some things, you know, it's kind of like when you're coaching college or pro, it takes you a few years to get your system built in what you want, yep. you know. And, and, you know, one of the things about PC North, and the next two teams, if he can get by North and the next team in Stillwater, has been the team that's beat him the last couple of years has been kind yeah. of his nemesis. So if he can kind of get that monkey off the bag and knock off North, because North is, I mean, you know. North's people, a good team. North, yeah. That's what I'm saying. People yeah. think North is kind of weak and, hurt. oh, their quarterback's not that good and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I've kind of watched a little bit of game film, you know, preparing myself, you know, for this, for the show and, and you know, yeah. no one's going to go on because I, I haven't been to a game this year. And I might still not go to a game because, you know, I don't want to, right. you know, be the jinx and, you know, oh, man, Tony came again. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, um, I kind of like to watch that. You know, my little cousin, his boy plays for North. So, um, yeah. Lamonte Hunt, his little boy plays over there. He's just a sophomore, but he's up and coming. Won't be one of the best DBs by the time he leaves North or wherever school, you know, he's at. But uh, one of the things about that game, though, I think Tata got some guys back, um, had a chance, you know, had this week off, yep. get some kids healed up and get back. So, um, it's going to be a tough game. I mean, I haven't yeah, picked that game easy. yet. Uh, I don't know who will win that game because I think it, you know, you're looking at the score, they beat, you know, Chata beat Barsville 61 to 21, then North beats mm -hmm. Barsville 31 to 6. And so you're looking at it. And I mean, yeah. it's a juggernaut. But, you know, one thing I did look at, and then, and then, you know, if you look at the east side and the west side, you know, the Muskogees and the, uh, you know, Ponca Cities come over and play against these teams over here, yeah, they they, they kind of got beat up. And right. so you look at them like, man, is, is the West really that much better? You know, only team that North lost to this year was who? You know, Midwest City and Stillwater. City, Stillwater, and, yep. Stillwater. So, and, and both games they got beat up. So I don't know if North has a – excuse me. I don't know if North has enough offense to keep up with Chata because – if that running game's going and still can hit some of those, you know, deep balls, and, you know, I yeah. told you Ziegler had a real good game a couple of weeks ago, you know. I mean, it's senior night, man. I mean, he needs to make this another senior night because yeah. um, he had a real good game, and, you know, Terrell is doing his thing, and then you're, you're going to get R.J. back. Um, you, just, you got the three-headed monster with the three running backs, oh, yeah. you know. So, that running uh, game. You know, still can run the ball, so and the defense has been kind of doing this thing. So, I think Tata goes in his game. One, like you said, it first playoff game – I, and, and I mean, if right. anybody First knows, one they've hosted in a I long mean, time. let us know because I yeah. mean, you know, that's something everybody wants is to host a playoff game. You know, right. and granted, they would host two playoff games if, if the other team would opt it out. So you give yep. them the preps on that too. But I think Corbin and Coach uh, Brian have those guys in the right direction, ready to go. It's a big game, like I said, but it it's is. a team that has beat you the last couple of years. You know, I yeah. mean, so we know what North's going to bring the game, but. I won't pick that until the end of the show. Ronnie, I know you're watching. You wait for my pick. You know, he I'm going to go ahead and pick Choctaw. You're going to pick Choctaw? What are you going to pick? pick? What are you going to pick? What are you going to pick? What's the score? What's the score? Uh, I think it will be close. I think uh, I'll take 42 to 28. No, it no, won't be. no, 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 no. E, e, the e. offense has been 
firing on all seven. They're not gonna put a forty two. You're not gonna put that many Stillwater didn't put that many points up against him. So you think Tata's gonna put that many points up against PC? Why not? PC, PC North got some athletes, man. You go watch some film, baby. See, I just don't sit here with my fireplace, baby. I'm watching film. I'm seeing what's <laughs> going on. I, I watch these teams, and I'm just telling you, man, it's gonna be a good matchup. They got they got a six six receiver, a six four, and a number number twenty two, the slot receiver for PC North. The kid can go. So if the quarterback can get okay, the ball, okay, but Choctaw's got Latrell Ray, who's been busting out. Long runs. He's a little guy. He's short and shifty. Hey, he can hey, bust hey, out a hey, run. Hey, 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 let me break it they down. They got Terrell Davis quick. that can go over the top of anybody. Okay. Looking like a short DeAndre Hopkins okay. going over everybody. Let me, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you now. PC North got some athletes. You so does Choctaw. PC North got some athletes. <laughs> they, got, they got some athletes, E. I love this, baby. We're, we're debating here. <laughs> PC North. And that's why I said I'm going to wait to the end of the show to pick my to make my pick. Go watch a little film. They got some guys that can run. The difference of that game, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to put a little pressure on you, sophomore QB. They call him the man of steel. The man of steel. I like it. I like it. I saw his little brother had a little little hoodie on that says the man of steel. It was pretty cool. I like that, man. I I, I do. I really do like that. But it's going to come down to him because if you don't turn the ball over, kind of like Urban, you're young. Yeah. You're young, baby. If If he can control the game. And don't turn the ball over. So I thought I could win the ball game. But I ain't going to make my pick until we're done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's move on. Let's move all on. All right. What we got next? We got uh, – that's all for 6A. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, so I'm, let's I'm, move on to 5A. I'm, 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 I'm in 5A. I'm ready to go. You got yeah. L Reno and Piedmont. Yeah. El Reno and Piedmont. I'm going to pick El Reno. Oh, El Reno's yeah. been hot lately. They lost their quarterback beginning of the year, but now he's back. Piedmont run that option. El Reno had to buy. Guess what? You gave me two weeks to prepare for you to stop that option. Yep. You gave me two weeks to stop that option. Guess what? I'm going to take El Reno. All right. I got You got Pryor McAllister. Don't know that much about those teams, nah. but I tell you right now, McAllister is probably one of them tough towns that people live in. And guess what? I'm going to go with McAllister. Go with McAllister? I'm going to go with McAllister. Go it, up gets, in the... it gets better, baby, because yeah. you got Kawita. Kawita and Claremore, yeah. I mean, you know, both of those teams, man, you know, Chata scrimmage, Kawita, you know, uh, last year, you know, the year when the boys, when you guys were seniors, you went up yep. there and played them in Broken Arrow. Uh, yep. The Quita's a, a decent little ball club, man. Um, you, you know, Claremore is pretty decent too, but I'm gonna pick Quita in that. They got a good DB that tra- Darby trains over there, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Quita over there in that in that game right now. Right. Here we go. Who we got here? We Bishop got, McGinnis and Duncan. You got Luke and his boys. Yeah, Luke and his boys. I don't know what Bishop McGinnis did, but they got the Perfect side of the bracket. Oh yeah, they stayed away from Carl Albert, Bishop Colin Kelly. Zillion. Yeah, Bishop, I mean Bishop yeah. Kelly beat him, Carl Albert beat him, and they get the easiest side of bracket. I know everybody got to be upset because I'm upset if I'm Carl Albert. How do they get the easy side of bracket? You know what Luke's doing? Luke's over there eating Cheerios yeah. right now, talking about Licking guess his what? Chops. He saw he, he <laughs> hey, you know what he's about to do? He's about to paint his shoes gold because he's kind of like Cinderella, baby, because he's going to the <laughs> dance. Luke yeah. is going to the dance, so I'm gonna pick Bishop Kelly to beat up on Duncan. Duncan, you got a great place with great Chinese. I'm yeah. I'm sorry. I mean I'm sorry. Bishop yeah. McGinnis to beat up on Duncan. Put some respect on it. I'm sorry, my fault. My fault, <laughs> Biggie. I'm getting ahead of myself. But Duncan, you do got a great Chinese place to go eat at. You guys love. I love to eat. But guess what? They got to go to their own buffet and eat the Duncan Chinese place. Because guess what? Bishop McGinnis is moving on. On the other side, baby, it is tough over here. Whew. I'm telling you, it's tough. It you got Guthrie and Mahu. MacArthur. MacArthur. Lot MacArthur. Man, you know what? Lot MacArthur. All you got to do is probably put on green like Jones did, and they're going to give you the game because Guthrie got beat by a 2 A school just a couple <laughs> weeks ago, and I'm still fired up about that. And guess what? MacArthur's going to beat Guthrie. Guthrie, man, agree, you know yeah. what? They should be voted out. If this was kind of like the show, you can vote people off the island. What was that, Big Brothers? I'm yeah. voting them off the island because they shouldn't be in 5A no more. They got beat by a 2A school. Yeah. Talk to me, Big E. Talk to you. I'm fired yeah. up now, yeah. baby. Now, now we got a team that I've been – kind of uh, excited to watch or just to pay attention to Collinsville and Shawnee Collinsville has been putting up 50 point plus games every week it's just crazy oh you got the mic falling down Mike's again falling. I'm so excited the mic <laughs> just falling hold it. 
Just hold it. I, I, I'm so <laughs> like excited. Like a little boom mic. We got yeah, I got my whole boom <laughs> mic today, baby. Yeah. I'm so excited. The mic is falling, though. But, hey, we're going to keep it going. Great job, Sexton, yeah. getting your first win. And guess what? It might be your last win in the playoffs. Because, yeah, you know, I mean, Collins Collins is just, gonna run it up. It's just too much for yeah. you right now. They are just too much. Uh, who else we got right uh, here? Bishop, Mc, uh, sorry, Bishop Kelly and Tahlequah. See, you, you were talking about Bishop and Guinness getting them mixed up. Now you got me mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Bishop Kelly versus Tahlequah. I mean, Bishop Kelly has been another one of those teams. They've been on the top, uh, towards the top of 5A all year. So, uh, I'm going to have to go with Bishop Kelly. And then, uh, lastly, Carl Albert versus Ardmore. Carl Albert, that would won it four straight. Now, if, if you're a senior, you got – you graduated last year. You got four – and now seniors this year, they're going to have four. I think Carl Albert is going to go in and win it all. Big E. Big E. I know you got friends over there. I got friends, but it's just Listen like it's me. another one of those things Listen with Bigsby. Me. Do you not see who they got to go? You got to go beat Armour. Yeah, they you got. Play? Time out. You beat Armour a couple years ago in the state, in the state finals. Yep. Now you got to go play them again, in which Armour is not a bad team. They, you know, they beat Woodward, you know, 35 to 14. You know, Carl Albert did have that break. Armour's going to come in there. Armour got some athletes. Yeah, you know, Armour's gonna, not bad. They're not bad. Carl Albert's going to win the game. Yeah. But guess what? They're going to take a little beat down a little bit. They're going to get beat up a little bit. Then you got to go prepare next week for Bishop Kelly, a team that's, that's a good ball club. And yeah. guess what? If you win that game, who you got next sitting at the door? Collinsville. So you got three weeks. You got three weeks. Then the fourth week, you got who? Luke and the boys. Yeah. So, but with Carl Albert, they've won four straight. They I'm holding this the, mic tonight, yeah. folks. I'm holding the mic. Holding <laughs> the got, mic tight. Here we they go. They have four straight. They have that uh, atmosphere in the locker room. They have that tradition. They have that winning tradition. Uh, I don't see it I'm, being I'm, beat. I just don't. I, I don't I don't see it. I, I, I think it's going to be tough for them to get to. I mean, but, if even if they get there – they beat – it's hard to beat a team twice, and I think if they face Luke and the boys – and I told you this earlier, and I've told everybody this. If you get there, you might beat a team one time. It's going to be hard to beat them two. And, and, and really, Bishop McGinnis should have beat them the first time, had them down 35 to 14, and turned yep. around and get, it, end up getting beat by you know, 21 to 28 points. But you got you got to keep the same game plan, you know. If, if Luke got to get some help. That game, he just got his brother back now. Yeah. They should be healthy going into the game. So, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't even know if Colorado is going to get get past Collinsville. That's just real talk. That's keeping it 100. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's going to be tough. Collinsville's a good team. It's gonna they be really tough. are. It's like, be, we've been be, talking about them. They've been putting up points. It's going to uh, be really, really, really tough. Bro. Hopefully, we see that matchup. I mean, if all if everything goes how it's supposed to, I, I mean, I, 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 think I think that is the semifinal matchup. But uh, – that's that should, a game that I really want to see. Hopefully, it won't be too far out. That'll be on a neutral that should, site. That should be so the state championship. That, that game should be the state championship. I don't know what Bishop McGinnis did. I don't know if they got somebody on the board of OSSA, <laughs> but somebody hooked them up in the playoffs, man, because I don't know how you stay away from Bishop Kelly, Carl Albert, and Collinsville, and they yeah. got the they got Kuita. they got to worry about is Kuita. You know, Kuita's not a bad ball club, but I'll tell you right now, no. uh, Luke and the boys will be there, though. Uh, what are we looking at, 4A now? Yeah, 4A, you got Weatherford versus Cushing, which is uh, where we had him on earlier. Mike Lester, he'll be helping officiate. He'll be on the officiating crew of that game. Um, Cushing got the win last week, 41-17 versus Bethany. Got but a little amount there. But Weatherford's the number one seed. Yeah, you gotta, Weatherford's hey, the one seed. There's a reason why you're number one, baby. Yep. There's a reason why you're number one, so I'm going to take Weatherford in that game. I think we both agree to that game. Yeah. And then who you got next? You got Hildell and Grove. Don't know much about them. <laughs> Uh, but Hildell, uh, they went up against Miami, uh, shut them out, forty-two nothing. So, uh, and then Grove had Mil- Muldrow, uh, forty-one to thirteen. They both can score some points. Yeah, you see that? That's gonna be a up, high-scoring game. Yeah, it'll be a high-scoring game. So, uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna take Grove in that game. You're gonna take Grove. I'm gonna take Grove. I'm gonna have to be that guy that goes for the higher seed. I'm gonna have to take Hildell. I just don't <laughs> know much about it. Um, you know, uh, Wagner and Salisaw. And I told you earlier, I picked Wagner to win 4A State, and I'm going to keep going with Wagner. So I think Wagner 
a, a beat up on them. This I think this would be a good game right here. Tuttle uh, and Newcastle. Tuttle and Newcastle. Newcastle's yeah. a team I've been kind of following, man, watching them. You know, they, they got yeah. some pretty cool uniforms and some of the stuff they're doing over there, man. And, you know, Mike kind of talked about them earlier coming back. Well, mm-hmm. they came back last week against John Marshall. So, yep. you know, you might as well call them. They, they call them the Racers. I think that's their, their yeah, name. Yeah, the Racers. But they should be called the Combat Kids because <laughs> it seems like they're coming back every week. Right. But I think Tuttle's too much for them. I know they're both kind of around the corner from each other. They can meet right. each other at the casino right down there. But I think Tuttle's going to take care of business. So, good luck to Tuttle moving on to that, to that, to that. Uh, what we got? We got eight final quarterfinal matchup. See, they're not even in the quarterfinals yet, man. Man, I'm just telling you, man. You get to these smaller schools man, brackets. That they, it's a long they, they, bracket. It's a long. That's why. That's yeah. why we're gonna be keep going here, keeping 100 for a few yeah. more weeks, talking high school sports. But uh, you know, we'll we'll keep doing those brackets as, they, as we get to them. So you got Ada and Clinton. You know, that's probably an old school rival back in the day. Uh, our guy uh, Ada knocked off our guy. You know, from Hera. You know, Coach Chris. But you know what? Yeah. Congratulations to what he did getting hair in the playoffs too. Yeah. So great job, Coach Chris. And you know, like I said hope he can come back strong and and get those guys back. You know, to the second or third round next year. But I think Clinton, you know, Clinton uh, Nate is going to be a good game. But I'm going to take Ada in that game. Yep. And then we got Poto and Sky took. Uh, Poto has been one of those teams the past few years. You got, uh, in four A, you hear about them a lot. Uh, they're they're consistently good. Uh, Always toward the top of the 4A rankings, uh, so I'm gonna have to take Poto in this game. Hope I'm pronouncing that right, Poto. Uh, I think I mean I'm agree with you on that. I think Poto will get the win. You know, Scott took. You know, it's a good little wrestling school, but I think Poto got some good athletes over there, so I'm gonna take Poto on that. Uh, Broken Bow, man. You know, <laughs> uh, they must be tough. Yeah. They're gonna be taking on Bristol. Uh, you know, yeah, Bristow you know. putting up 48 points against McLean last week. Uh, yeah, McLean, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take bro, Broken Bow. I'm going to take, take Broken Bow? I'm take Broken Bow on that game. I'll agree with you on that one. See if Broken Bow can get the upset this week. I'll I tell you right now, this could be a, a, a team that is, is making some noise. It's Blanchard. Oh, you yeah, know? I mean, he sure. put up 54 points last week. Folks, that ain't easy to put up 54 points in a high school game, you know. And, and yeah. it's not like it was great weather last weekend. It's kind of chilly. But, I, I, you know, Blanchard knocked off, what, Tuttle a couple weeks ago. So, yeah. uh, I tell you right now, Blanchard, you know, got it rocking and rolling. So, I'm going to take Blanchard. Uh, to yeah, move on, to move on to the next round, and we'll talk about their their rounds next week. Because, like I said, they still got two or three more rounds. We didn't even think about getting to the finals, though. So, right? Uh, what we in now? Three uh, A. Uh, probably won't go through every game in three A because as you get to these smaller <laughs> schools, their brackets are just ridiculous. Like championships not going to be played until December eleventh or twelfth. Yeah, that'd be Christmas so, though. So they'd be yeah. open. They'd be open to gifts on Christmas Eve. You know, on, on the football field, whatever playoff yeah. game they're in. Uh, I mean, pick out some highlight ones that we have. And we'll kind uh, of... Let's look around here. We got uh, Heritage Hall versus Plainview. Uh, I'm pretty sure if Heritage Hall finished up with the one seed. Heritage Hall is going to take care of business there. Yeah, for sure. They'll be moving on. Uh, Verdigree was a team that we talked about not too long ago when they had their uh, matchup against Holland Hall. Holland Hall smacked them. Um, uh, you know, that was, one of, that was like the game of the week that week. Uh, I think it was like two versus three yep. seed over there. And then uh, – Verdigree just kind of fell apart in that game, but they got Barry Hill. I think Verdigree will uh, they'll bounce it. back. And they'll get a get a win, and they'll have that matchup against Heritage Hall. Um, Lincoln Christian, another team that's been on the top, in the three A. Uh, they got Tulsa Central. Uh, I think there there's no slowing down with them, so I'll have them uh, winning that game. Uh, Holland Hall versus Shakota. You know, uh, just a second ago brought them up about their game versus Verdigree. Uh, just totally dominated that game. I think they'll do the same here with Shakota, and they'll move on to play Kingfisher. Uh, Kingfisher has Lone Grove. Uh, I think Kingfisher will get the win against uh, Lone Grove. Then the final two games, we got Kingston versus Perkins, and hey, then Stigler versus Anita. That's funny about that Kingston because you know that's the yeah. town I stayed in when I went fishing last you know week, and it's a funny to see that that town. You know, you look at it, you are like, oh my god, they're undefeated. Yeah, I mean, they're good. So I'm, I'm going to take them, you know, those boys just don't fish in that town. I guess they play football too. So oh, yeah. uh, it's good to see them, you know, you know, having a chance to, you know, shoot for a gold ball. So I'm with you on that. I'm going to take Kingston in that game. Yeah. And then you got Stigler versus Vanita. I don't know much about either of these teams. So I'm going to just take the higher seed just to be safe. So I got Stigler winning that game. I'm going to take Vanita. 
You gonna take Vanita with no, the upset? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you even know where Vanita is? No. If I showed you a map, could you point out? Vanita? I could not point it out. You know what? But I can say that's hey, no knock on Vanita. I, I just... can say this though, yeah. Boop, Siri, where's Vanita? And then it'll tell me. So yes, right, right. And then now you get in the golly, uh, you pull up the uh, Class A bracket. I mean, it just it looks like the hey, NCAA we, 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 tournament. It looks we, we, like the we, best of 64. We got to go to 2A, though. We got to go to 2A because my man's in 2A, and I tell you, 2A is loaded. You got my man, Coach Ginn, in 2A. And I'm yeah. going to tell you, folks, if you're looking for the coach of the year, you got to go get Coach Ginn over there at Beth the Wildcats. The guy has done amazing thing. My mic is down. God forgive me. <laughs> Thank me. I'm holding it tight, but listen to me. Hopefully, we'll have that fixed for next episode. We, we, we will have it fixed, but I'm going to tell you, though, I'm going to keep it 100. If you're looking for a coach of the year, folks, listen to me. Get on there and vote for this young man. I'm telling you, he's done a great job with yeah. the Bethel Wildcats. Got him in the playoffs. Got a first playoff win. Had a home game last week. They're going to travel up to Marlow. And I've said it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. Bethel will pull up the upset over Marlow. Listen to me. Bethel will pull up the upset over Marlow. What do you think? All right. I'll go with you. He's going to go I with you. I don't know much about two-way football, so I guess I'll just side but with There's you. some good teams in there. Yeah. Uh, you got some good oh, teams. Oh, yeah. There there are some good teams. You got uh, Millwood. Um, what's another one? Washington. Washington is a tough team. Yeah. It's a tough team. Vian, uh, one of those uh, one of those teams that have been on the top. Uh, a lot of people have them winning two-way. Um, they have that, uh, have that athlete over there. He's committed to uh, – he's going D1 somewhere. I, I, but, I couldn't tell you who it is, Big E. I'm yeah, sorry. I've heard I, his name, but – uh, they got him over there, and a lot of people are choosing them as the favorites to win 2A. Or, yeah. So, and then what else we got? What else we got? Yeah, Washington versus Purcell. I think Washington will win that. Washington beat up on Purcell, yeah. man. I mean, it won't even be a game, but, you know, Washington's a tough team. You know, they got the facilities over there, man. And, I mean, they do year in, year out. My, my, I got a couple guys I went to high school with. John Hancock's the principal over there. Yeah. Uh, you know, Reynolds is the uh, superintendent over there. So, great job, Hancock. You know, I mean, like I said, he's old bomber, both of them old bombers, but they're doing a great job of Washington. So keep it rolling over there, Washington. Um, yeah. And then uh, Christian Heritage versus Frederick. You know, we had uh, uh, you know, have that episode coming out later this week. Um, Coach talking, Tad, Yeah, Coach. with the ACT prep. You know, yeah. he kind of does it all. He does the ACT prep. He has his own podcast doing ACT prep. He, uh, he coaches at uh, Christian Heritage. You know, jack of all trades. Um, you know, so uh, they got Frederick. It'll be a tough matchup for them, but um, I'd like to see Christian Heritage pull off the upset. I'd love to see that. You know, the thing so. about those 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 kind of games right there, Biggie, is is kind of find out who who gets hot, who don't have the turnovers. You know, yeah. Uh, both teams probably you know match. You know, Frederick probably has a little bit more athlete, but you know, Coach Tony does a good job over there coaching those guys up. So. Uh, I, I think it'd be a good get ball game. Like I said, hopefully, you know, Christian Harris can pull up the upset and, you know, bring home, you know, the win. Because, like I said, two ages don't get easy. Each week it gets tougher and tougher. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's kind of like a wrestling bracket. Right. Everybody there is a state champion. And so, guess what? You you got to you gonna get everybody's best punch. So guess what? You got to get prepared for it and go get you know go, go take it and move on to the next round. Right. But good luck to those guys and good luck to everybody that's in the playoffs because right now. Yeah. The playoffs is about, hey, you survive, you keep. You lose, you go home. You win, you keep going. And nobody wants to end the season because it, no, it ain't no week eight. It ain't no week nine. This is it. Right. You know, this is you win, you move on, you lose. Guess what? You're going to your next sport. And especially being a senior, there is no more high school football. And I'm telling you, yeah. some, of the saddest, some of the saddest times in your life when high school you know, sports is over because, yeah. I mean, you don't get to see the same guys every Friday night. You don't get to stare at this locker room. You don't get to stare going to McDonald's or Brahms before the games and going to one of your buddies' house and play the Xbox or the PlayStation, right. you know, and Madden and all that. <laughs> you know, those are the good times. I remember that doing that when I played with my guys, you know, me and Jeremy and Jason and Brian Jackson, we would get together. It's kind of like what you guys did. So uh, high school football is fun. But, you know, think about keeping 100. We're not going to stop here at high school football next week. And I got a young man that, you know, signed with Little Rock, Arkansas, you know, K. Uh, Minion, you know, from Deer Creek is going to come on and talk. Going to be my high, my first high school, you know, wrestler is going to come on and touch base with us, you know, see yeah. if he can win another state championship. He signed with Little Rock. Coach Neal, you know, Emerson's a good coach out there. And uh, Cade's a kid. And, you know, my son had a chance to wrestle a couple times. But he's also a great young man, comes from a great family. He's out there at Deer Creek. And, then, you know, it's like I said, we got some stuff set up, you know, with uh, 
you know, with Piccolo. I'm supposed to go see their program. You know, and this is a team that's going to try to fight for a state championship. It's been in a battle the last couple of years. His sons, you know, both one of his boys is already at at, at uh, OU and his other son is going for his third state championship. So, and hopefully these guys get to have a wrestling program, you know, with oh, everything yeah, going sure. on right now, Big E, you know, shutting these schools down. Some of these people right. shut down their uh, winter sports. And I hope these kids, because especially if you're a senior, man, and, you know, and, and, and you didn't get to finish your sports last year, like basketball, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, luckily, you know, wrestling did get to finish, but, like, basketball didn't get to do their state championship. Baseball didn't get to have a season. And you mm -hmm. don't want to see some of these guys, you know, that was a juniors didn't get to play. Now they're seniors. They don't get to play. You want to see everybody get to finish their season. So hopefully they get to finish their season. But like I said, we got Jennifer Douglas from, you know, El Reno. We got, you know, Jeannie Holbrook. So we got coaches lined up, man. It's yeah. it's so funny. We, you know, I've been kind of, you know, calling these people and getting them booked up. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, they keep coming on. You know, we had Chad come on. You know, like I said, we can shoot here next week. We shoot back at our studio, whatever Big E want to do. But, yeah. you know, it, it's fun to talk high school sports, you know, and, and do something that we love doing. And, and I'm going to keep saying it, though, man. I, I, I'm enjoying it. Even though yeah, I'm holding too. my mic, I'm still enjoying it tonight, <laughs> yeah. though. So Yeah, it's been a blast so far. Uh, you know, um, I mentioned it before. This is what I'm going to school for. And uh, thankfully, Tony's given me this opportunity to come on here and do what I love and uh, join him with it. Hey. So, uh, yeah, it's been a blessing. It's been fun. Hey, you know what? We're not gonna stop. Even when Thanksgiving's oh, yeah. coming, maybe we're gonna we're gonna like I said, there's a lot of a lot of more things we gotta do. You know, we gotta <clears> kinda <throat> get our all star team to keep it one hundred, all state team, you know, we'll start working oh, yeah. on that. Um, like I said, you know, if you know and I'm gonna say it and I'm gonna say it every week and week out, you know, we're having people come on, but if you know a young man that needs to get spotlighted and he needs to get his name out there, let us know. That's what we're here yeah, for. Sure. To to, you know, help get people names out there, you know. We got the connection with the ACT prep, you know, the recruiting. I mean, Mr. Chad gave you a lot of information how to get your kid recruited. Listen to him, what he says when you watch that episode. Listen to it. I mean, listen to him because, I mean, I'm telling you, it's good stuff because yeah. I wish I would have knew some of those things. And don't put it in the coach's hands because those coaches got a job to do. I mean, I mean their, their job is to, hey, win ball games, and they're going to do everything to get you recruited. But – you parents got to do it. You know, you got to get your kid on Twitter. You got to right. get your kids in yeah. the camps and, and do the right thing. So, uh, another great episode of Keeping It 100, Oklahoma oh, yeah. High School Sports, baby. It's what we do, Big yeah. E. It's what we do. Been doing it. We're going to keep on doing it. And we're not going to stop. No stopping. Not stopping. Yeah. No stopping at all. So, <laughs> so yeah, thanks for joining uh, joining us for another episode. Uh, um, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, you got Tony on Twitter at High Keeping, and then uh, me on Twitter at Ethan underscore Z underscore Davis. Uh, get at us, you know, maybe give us some of your takes, your opinions. Uh, get at us with that, and then we'll try to respond to those. Um, I'm going to try to get the Instagram back rolling again. Uh, so I believe that is Keep It 100 underscore High School Sports on Instagram. If you want to go ahead and give us a follow on Instagram, I'll try to get that back rolling. And, uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in for another episode. Uh, so, yeah. Another episode of Keeping It 100, Oklahoma High School Sports. Thank you. Thank you. With 25 years experience in the industry, Linex Customs OKC is your one-stop shop for all your vehicle accessory needs. Specializing in spray-in liners, lifts, levels, wheels, tires, bed covers, and anything else you need to make your ride look and sound better. Call Eric and the boys at 405-778-8878.